there's a big difference between open world games with lots of content, which many have, and those with a lot of creatively designed content, like you'll find in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. The fifth version of Bethesda Game Studios' long-running role-playing series is an incredible game, a colossal fictional world that constantly surprises. Even after over 100 hours of play, you'll still uncover quests and items and characters that lead to undiscovered territory and unexpected results. Not only is Skyrim one of the best games of 2011, it's one of the best role-playing games ever made. Where are they taking us? I don't know where we're going, but Sovereign Guard awaits. The world of Skyrim, a mountainous tract of fantasy land lashed by spines of rocky mountains, forests, vast fields, and crumbling catacombs, is brought to life through a staggering attention to detail. The visuals are stunning, from the swirling mists along distant mountaintops to the incredible detail etched into every weapon, spell effect, piece of armor, and every structure. Within this space, you're given the freedom to live however you want. Buy a house and line the shelves with books, attack everyone you see, follow along with quest assignments, or simply wander. It's really up to you. I doubt anyone will experience the story of Skyrim in quite the same way. You could do the main quest first, figure out why the dragons have returned, and how you're tied up in their fate. You could visit the College of Winterhold for magical training, visit the Dark Brotherhood if you're a nefarious type, or call on the Companions, the Skyrim equivalent of the Fighters Guild. After a few hours, your quest log will be filled with tasks, from more substantial side quests to an ever-growing checklist of miscellaneous tasks. Since the days of Oblivion, Bethesda's learned a lot about how to make characters feel less artificial. Conversations flow naturally, instead of mysteriously pausing the flow of time after you say hello. Animations can sometimes be stiff, and character models, specifically faces, still look a little awkward. But overall, what you find in Skyrim is a dramatic improvement over previous Elder Scrolls games. Not every story told in Skyrim manages to impress, but given the vast amount of content contained within, that so much of it is interesting is a remarkable achievement. It also doesn't hurt that you're treated to an achingly beautiful soundtrack throughout your journey. No game is able to instill such a powerful sense of adventure and discovery as The Elder Scrolls V. When you're not charging across the countryside through fog, snow, and sun in search of your next conquest, you'll often be fighting. The same basic ideas of Bethesda's franchise still apply here for character development and leveling, but differ in quite a few ways. At the beginning, you only select a race. There's no need to select major skills or anything like that. Instead, you're given the freedom to pick what you want to specialize in after you've had the opportunity to try it out firsthand. Leveling in Skyrim happens through skill use. Shoot a fireball and your destruction magic will increase. Make a potion to level your alchemy skill. Craft armor to boost your smithing. Once enough of these skill categories are leveled, your overall character level increases. You are no longer forced to make so many important decisions at the character creation screen. Instead, you make decisions at your own pace, so it's easy to avoid making choices you'll later regret. The resulting experience simply makes more sense, and it's easier to see the effects of your decisions. Leveling also gets you perk points, which can be spent immediately to learn new abilities, or stored in case you aren't yet sure what you want to do. For example, level one-handed weapons to gain damage bonuses and even the chance to decapitate, though the weapon combat system still, like in Elder Scrolls games past, can feel floaty, like you're slicing at air instead of through the flesh of enemies, the combat does get better if you choose to invest in related perks. Though there's still room for improvement, the close-range weapon combat is the best it's been in the series, and the third-person combat has been much improved. The spell system has received a number of changes as well, for the better. Spells can be set as active in both hands and cast independently. That means you can shoot fire while healing, or cover yourself in a magical shield while summoning a demon. It's a sensible, flexible system, and one that gets better once you unlock dual casting abilities that let you cast the same spell from both hands for enhanced effects. There are so many ways to meaningfully alter your playstyle, stealth, spells, and swords in any combination, plus the ability to bring along followers to help out, that exploring the perk tree feels just as exciting and rewarding as exploring Skyrim. That leads to the other major upgrade system, Dragon Shouts. You don't need Magicka to cast these, so if you've been ignoring spells, 
you can still breathe fire, slow time, blast force waves, shout ice, and call in dragons. Learning more shouts is tied to exploration. Finding word walls around Skyrim expands your collection of abilities, but you can't actually activate any shouts until you've fought a dragon and absorbed its soul. Dragon encounters happen all over Skyrim. Some beasts patrol the same areas, but others will randomly show up across the landscape, assaulting you in the middle of a fight with something else. While the scale is impressive as the dragons are huge, the encounters do tend to become somewhat repetitive as dragons repeat the same behaviors. The excitement of fighting a dragon wears off after a few fights, but they're always worth fighting to expand your skill set. Plus, even if you're not going to fight them, they look pretty damn cool. Though Skyrim gets so many things right, not everything's perfect. As tends to be the case with games this big, there are bugs, which can be as minor as glitchy character models, to as strange as teleporting mammoths, to as irritating as broken quests. Expect to find bugs on your tour of Skyrim, but don't expect them to be serious enough to damage the experience that much. Skyrim is a massive, beautiful game. It maintains the open-world structure of Elder Scrolls titles past, is filled with creatively designed content, and provides a huge amount of flexibility as to how you develop your character. Bethesda has created a world that feels real, that feels like it existed long before you arrive, and will continue to exist long after you leave. Few games ever made can inspire such a powerful desire to explore, and even fewer can provide the rewards that make continued play feel worthwhile. Skyrim is a rare game that can. For more on Skyrim, head over to IGN.com.